morning and welcome to In the Kitchen with Ashley. I'm here with Stephanie Gondola. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Ashley. So thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me. So what are we making? Well, today we're making a recipe that's all about history. And oftentimes we don't learn a lot about people's daily lives in the regular history books. You learn about the big events, the wars and the, and the political um, events, but not a lot about the, the daily lives of regular people. And I'm sure food has something to do with that. Absolutely. Food is, especially to me, an important part of our daily lives. And so today we're going to be making a, a recipe that comes straight out of the history. Oh, really? And what is this piece called? This is Wiener Schnitzel. And it's actually one of the items that was on the menu from the shipwreck Nordmir. And what is a Nordmir? So the Nordmir is one of the most recent shipwrecks in sanctuary waters. Ran aground in November of 1966. And in fact, it, it was sticking up out of the water up until a few years ago. And so one of the ways that we get some insight into history, if we don't have the daily lives written in the history books, is archaeologists take a look at different artifacts. And so these artifacts might be the items used to prepare food. It might be the, the tableware. And it also could be the artifacts such as this menu that we found on the Nordmare. That's awesome. So I see we have some stuff set up right here. Can you we do. Here? We do. So Wiener Schnitzel, a very traditional German dish. And it's actually very simple to make. Um, and the first step, and a very important step, is tenderizing the, the, the meat. And so the meat can be veal or it can be pork. Um, on the menu for the Nordmere, it did um, say uh, breaded veal. But today, we're going to use um, boneless pork chops. Okay. And so to tenderize, you want to secure the meat or cover the meat in either plastic wrap or parchment paper. We're using parchment paper today to um, not create more plastic pollution. Absolutely. But, but the trick is to use a, a very heavy mallet, and you want to use the smooth side. And then you, you really got to gotta hit it hard. So, And I'm going to give you a chance to do this as well. So don't be afraid. Okay. <laughs> All right, Steffi, so now that we have tenderized these, what's next? The next step is to lightly salt and pepper them on each side. Just a little bit. Give it some flavor. Give it some flavor, some, some nice seasoning. And you want to definitely do it on both sides. So this, it is a very simple recipe, but one of the the key attributes of doing this recipe right is to do it in a timely fashion. You never want the meat sitting too long. You never want the breading sitting too long on, on the meat. And so what we're going to do is just quickly, efficiently move to, to the first stage. So we dip it lightly in some flour. And you just turn it on each side in the flour? Yeah, turn it on each side. And you don't want it you know, clumped on there, but you do want the, all sides sort of coated. So do that and shake it a bit. And then we have two beaten eggs here that we're going to dip it in. And this is another one. You don't want to let it soak in there at all. You want to just dip it in there, shake off the excess, and then dip it into some plain breadcrumbs. And feel free to start with the second cutlet there. And dip it into some plain breadcrumbs. And another key here to the success of the recipe and the crispiness of the breading is to not push the breadcrumbs into the cutlet. You want to. You want to just lightly, co lightly coat the meat. Shake off the excess and get it ready for the fryer. And so now we are ready to fry the meat for the Wiener Schnitzel recipe. So the key to frying anything is the, the temperature of the oil. And you also want to make sure to use the right kind of oil. So what we have in here now is canola oil. And we have enough in there, about probably 3 quarters of an inch, that the, the cutlets will actually swim, they say, in the oil. So just enough oil under the meat so it gets some oxygen in there and it doesn't stick to the pan. And so with very, very hot oil, this should get up to about 330 degrees. You have to be very careful because it is hot. And so you just set it right in there. And it looks like a good temperature here with the sizzle we're getting right off the bat. So the cutlets are in the fryer now. And we can see that we have the perfect temperature because it's, an, it's crisping up a nice golden brown. And you want these to cook fast, and that's why we want them so, so thin. That's why we tenderize them in the beginning, because then the, the coating, the breading, crisps up fast, but the meat also cooks. Yep. And so we'll give this two to three minutes on each side. Okay. So once it gets a little brown, a couple minutes, then yep. it's ready to take out. So here we are with our Wiener Schnitzel from the menu of the Nordmere. It's all set for service. The next step is to just get the toppings done. And so you want a nice, fresh slice of lemon on the top. which the lemon is a real complement to the flavor, for sure. 
brings some brightness and some freshness, especially in the summertime. This is a great summer dish. And then some fresh parsley to garnish it. And then it's also often served traditionally with homemade German potato salad and some mixed greens. This looks delicious. I can't wait to try it. What do you think, Ashley? Mm, this is delicious. Oh, very good. Just as I was thinking it would be. So if people want to check out more on the shipwreck, what should they do? Well, if you're interested in the Nordmere or any of the other 200 shipwrecks that are in and around Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, come to the Visitor Center, and uh, we have lots and lots of artifacts from the Nordmere. They're on display, um, and it's free and open to the public. All right, well, thanks so much, Stephanie, for joining me today at Art in the Loft to make this Wiener Schnitzel, which is it was a great dish, so thanks so much. Thank you, Ashley.